The story starts, and it is explained that it's been three years since Demon Lord Terexen invaded Avalon. For nations have fallen, and the Demon Lord holds half the continent. However, the god has not forsaken them, as a girl named Riddy Ragnason appeared, bearing the blessing of the hero. The scene then cuts to an adventurer named Red collecting some herbs in the mountains, and he states that this is the border region of Zoltan. To the north and east is the wall at the world's end, and a vast unexplored mountain range, and the rest is ringed by marshlands. This makes this place difficult to reach and of no strategic value, and due to this development has proceeded at snail's pace. The scene then cuts to Red handing over the herbs he gathered to the guild receptionist, and she gives him the reward for the quest which comes out to be 130 perils. Red thanks the receptionist Migria for this, and an adventurer named Oliver then asks Red if he never gets tired of gathering herbs. He states that Red should at least have a better weapon than that bronze sword, and Red mentions that a sword doesn't matter to him, as his dream is to open an apothecary, and he leaves. Red then thinks that there is only one problem with his dream, and he mentions that he doesn't have enough money to open up a shop. A kid named Tonta then comes there, and Red asks him where he is going. Tonta mentions that he is going to deliver lunch to his father, and Gons, and he states that Gons told him that he would make a fine carpenter one day. He mentions that he hasn't figured out what kind of blessing he has, but he is going to be a carpenter and build a shop for Red. Tonta then leaves, and Red explains that all living things have blessings. It is bestowed upon them by God to guide people's lives, and grant them strength. Blessings grant power known as skills, and people choose their professions based on their skills. The scene then cuts to Red at a room in an inn, and he remembers his past. Seeing his past, we find out that Red was a member of the hero's party, and one day the mage of the party named Ares invited Red to see him, and he asked him to break a barrier made by him, using a bronze sword. Red tried to break the barrier, but he couldn't do it. Ares told him that Red is no use to the hero's party if he can't even break a simple barrier like this, and Red mentioned that he could break the barrier easily if he used Thunder Waker instead of this bronze sword. Ares mentioned that it would be the power of Thunder Waker not his, and he stated that he is just a liability to them, as the hero had to protect him on their last mission. He mentioned that Gideon has the blessing of the guide, and his role is to guide and protect the hero on the first leg of her journey. From the day he has been born, he was as formidable as a veteran knight, and he has fulfilled his role admirably, but they no longer have a need for him. Now all the members of the hero's party are stronger than him, and he states that he knows that the hero is not going to abandon a comrade, therefore she will never ask Gideon to leave. He should quit on his own, so he will no longer be a burden on his sister, the hero. Gideon mentioned that he is second in command to the Bahamuth knights, and it would be a shame on their honor if he returned to the order after being labeled a liability, and he asks Ares to tell the others that he went to scout the demon lord's army and never came back. Ares agreed to go with Gideon's story, and he asked Gideon to leave his equipment behind before leaving, as his equipment was earned by the hero's party. Red mentions that this is when he changed his name from Gideon and came to Zoltan. He thinks that Ares was right, and his sister Rudy is better off without him, as she is stronger than him. He thinks that he is satisfied with his new life, and he goes to sleep. The scene then cuts to Red collecting herbs again, the next day, and he mentions that his blessing doesn't have any innate skill, but it has many common skills that anyone could obtain. The survival skill is one of them, and it keeps him from getting lost in the mountain reaches, and identify most medicinal plants. An owlbear then tries to attack Red, but Red dodges, and he thinks that he should let it be, as he is not in the hero's party anymore. The scene then cuts to Red returning to the village, and Migria is glad to see that he is alright. Red finds out that this fuss is due to the owl bear he just saw, and a B-rank adventurer named Albert then talks to him. He asks Red to show him some respect as he is just D-rank, and he states that he wants him to guide his party through the mountains so they could find and kill the owl bear. Red refuses his offer, and Albert asks him to reconsider as this is his chance to improve his rank, but Red mentions that he doesn't care about that, as he plans to open an apothecary. Albert then leaves Red alone as he gets annoyed by him, and Red thinks that he can't risk revealing his past under any circumstances. The scene then cuts to Red saying that he only made 90 perils today, and he mentions that at this rate it is going to take him half a year to open a shop. Gons then comes to his room, and he tells Red that Tonta has a fever, and the doctor says that he has white eye. Afterwards Red goes to Tonta's house, and talks to the doctor, and he finds out that Tonta really has the symptoms of white eye. 
he states that there is a risk of blindness if he is left untreated for 24 hours, and he mentions that they will need the right medicine before then. The doctor named Newman states that they are out of medicine due to the large goblin fever and white eye outbreaks this last month, and Red mentions that they will need blood needles to treat this. He states that he could find them in the mountains, but they are off limits due to the owl bear, and the adventurer's guild might expel him if they find out about that he went there. Gons then begs Red to go to the mountains to get those blood needles, and he mentions that he will give Red anything he asks as a reward. Red thinks that he would like to avoid this, but he doesn't have a choice, and he states that he will take this on as a friend rather than an adventurer, and he asks Gons to keep quiet about this. Red then heads to the mountains using his lightning speed skill, and he notices that the area where the blood needles are found is under fire. He can't believe that Albert's party used fire magic in a forest, and he douses himself with water to enter the fire. He collects the blood needles, and the owlbear then comes there. It tries to attack Red, but Red defeats it with a single strike, and he leaves. Albert's party then comes there, and they think that their attacks killed the owlbear, but Albert notices that something is amiss here. Back at the village Red administers the medicine, and we see that Tanta is on his way to a full recovery. Gons thanks Red for this, and Newman mentions that the doctors of Zoltan would be delighted to have someone as capable as Red open an apothecary here, and he asks Red to let him know when he opens up shop. Red then leaves Tanta's house, and he can't believe that even after doing all he could, he only managed to gather a single bag of blood needles. He states that this is why he got kicked out, and Gons then comes running after him. He thanks Red once more, and he states that he will be forever grateful to him. Red mentions that they should talk about his reward while the topic is still fresh, and he tells Gons what he wants. Four months later we see an adventurer named Rit reporting in at the guild, and she notices that Migria is dressed up nicely. Migria tells him that she was invited to a friend's celebration, and she explains that her friend has opened up a new apothecary, and she tells him more about Red. Hearing about him piques Rit's interest, and the scene cuts to Red thanking Gons for making him this shop. He explains that this is the reward he asked from Gons, and he mentions that he paid for the building materials, and Gons built it for free. Red then hears some adventurers talking that the hero's party has defeated Gondor's forces, and he thinks that they must be doing better without him. Red then makes a toast to the opening of his shop, and they all celebrate. Afterwards we see that it's a rainy day, and Red's shop is completely empty. He thinks that his concoctions are going to expire at this rate, and Rit comes there, and we see that they both know each other. Red explains that Rit's full name is Rizlet of Lagervia, and she is a B-rank adventurer in Zoltan, but she is actually the second princess of the Duchy of Lagervia, a major military power. Red then asks her what she is doing out here in the Bunis, and Rit explains that some people were favoring her for the throne over the crown prince, so she fled here before the battle for succession tore their family apart. Rit then asks Red why he is here, and Red tells her his story. Rit gets angry on his behalf hearing this, and she mentions that Red was not a liability. She states that he did his best to ensure the success of the party, and Red asks her to calm down, and he mentions that he would only put his friends in danger if he stayed, so it was for the best that he left. Rit wonders if the party is fine without him, and Red states that they must be, as they did defeat Gondor, one of the four heavenly kings in the Demon Lord army. Red then serves a cup of tea to Rit, and Rit likes the tea. She mentions that this is better than the tea back at the court, and Rit states that he is nothing compared to someone with the blessing of a chef. Rit mentions that it might taste good because Red made it for her, and this makes them both embarrassed. Red then explains that he met Rit several years ago, in the Duchy of Lagervia, and we see that back then Red was having a strategy meeting with his party in a tavern, when a man tried to flirt with Rit, who was cloaked in black but Rit scared the man off with her skills before he could lay a hand on her. She then revealed her identity, and she mentioned that the Duchy of Lagervia doesn't need the help of the hero to defeat the Demon Lord's army. Red mentions that Rit wasn't honest with herself back then, and Rit states that she was honest sometimes, like the time when they were scouting the mountain village together. Red then remembers that at that time the hero's party was unable to gather information regarding the enemy, and Rit mentioned that she would be happy to share the reports of her investigation with him if he begged her nicely. Red begged her without a second thought, and this surprised Rit, but Red mentioned that this is a small price to pay to save Lagervia. Rit then shared the reports of her investigation with her, and after talking about her report they found out that the Demon Lord's army is working behind the scenes in Lagervia, and Red suggested that they should work together on this one. 
Rit rejected this idea, and she mentioned that Lagervia doesn't need the help of the hero's party as they have already beaten back the demon lord's army twice. Red still tried to convince her, but Rit stayed true to her word. Red then shared some of his cookies with Rit, as they have all been on limited rations lately, and Rit loves his cookies. She found out that Red made them himself, and Red mentioned that he was tired of eating salty foods, so he learned to cook. Rit agreed with him, and she mentions that she was honest with herself back then. Red then reminds her of the time when they joined forces, and we see that even though Rit acknowledged Red's skills back then, she refused to say it out loud, and she acted like a sun deer. Red then thinks that Rit wasn't truly honest with herself till their showdown with Shisan Don, but the outcome of that battle was nothing to celebrate. We see that back at that time the Duchy of Lagervia was running low on supplies, due to the drawn-out war with the demons, and Rit mentioned that their enemy was on the same boat. She suggested that they should attack the fortress where the demons are keeping their supplies, while their main force distracts them, and she stated that she will carry out this mission herself along with a few other adventurers. The ministers were against the idea of sending a princess to enemy territory, but the captain of the guard, and Rit's master in sword training named Gaius agreed to her plan, and the hero's party also tried to lend a hand, but they were asked to stay behind and guard the capital. Later Rit was defeated by the demon lord's army, and she found out that Shisan Don had killed her master, and taken his form to guide Rit here. She was cornered by Shisan Don, and he wanted to crush the hopes of the people of Lagervia by killing Rit, their beloved hero, but Gideon came to her rescue on time, and Rit asked him what he is doing here. He told her that he felt that something was out of place, so he came to check. They fought Shisan Don together to buy time for Rudy to come there, and Rudy then slayed Shisan Don easily after she arrived. Rit then noticed that the adventurers she brought with him are all dead, and from then on, she stopped attending the war councils. Red came to talk to her about this, and he told her that he wouldn't make her fight if she doesn't want to, but he thinks that she does want to fight, but she is weighed down by sorrow at the moment. Rit told him that she is scared of losing any more people dear to her, and Red told him about their plans going ahead. He mentioned that they are going to summon reinforcements by going through the impassable bewitching woods, and he told her that he has a comrade named Yarandrila who can guide them out of the woods with her blessing. Rit told him that she will leave the rest to him, and Red mentioned that Rit must join him in this quest or the people of Lagervia are only going to remember today, as the day they lost their great captain of the royal guard. This bitter memory will remain in their hearts even after the demon lord's army is defeated, and he told her that she is one of her comrades, and the comrade of the hero as well. This war is not for the hero to win, it should be won by Lagervia's will to fight, or they are never going to repel the demon lord's army if they return after the hero's gone. Red mentions that after that Rit regained her will to fight, and the demon lord's army was vanquished. Red then asks Rit if she is hungry, and Rit states that she is, and Red mentions that he will cook something. Rit then asks Red if she can work here with him, and Red states that he just opened up shop so he can't afford to hire anyone, as business is slow. Rit mentions that it would be a pain for Red to close up shop every time he goes to collect herbs, and Red states that she is right, but he doesn't have many customers. Rit states that his business will grow, and she asks him if he has any concoctions that can only be found here. Red then shows her a painkiller, and a multiplying potion, which can increase the volume of any magic potion by five times. Rit states that the multiplying potion is a bad idea, as it will make the market crash, and Red then explains to her that this painkiller is just as effective as the current one, but it's less addictive. Rit mentions that painkillers require the approval of Zoltan's councils, and seeing that he doesn't know much about running a shop Red agrees to hire Rit. The two of them then have dinner, and Rit states that Red's cooking is great. She then asks Red about how many beds he has, and when he has breakfast, and Red finds out that Rit will be moving in with him. Elsewhere Ares introduces a new member named T. Say to the other members of the hero's party, and he mentions that she is an assassin. T. Say also introduces her pet spider named Mr. Crawley Wally, and the members of the hero's party introduce themselves as Danan and Theodora. The hero then comes there, and she also introduces herself, and she mentions that T. Say is going to be under her command. Rudy then states that they are going to find the weapon that the previous demon lord left behind, and she mentions that they will leave tomorrow. Red then wakes up on the ground, and he notices Rit sleeping on his bed. The scene then cuts to Rit coming down for breakfast, and Red asks her if she slept well. Rit mentions that she is not used to that bed, and Red states that this is not surprising as he did get that bed for dirt cheap. 
They then have some breakfast, and Rit mentions that today she is going to buy a new bed, and afterwards she will buy some paintings to decorate the store, as artwork can also impact their customers' opinion of their shop. She states that they will also have to ask the Zoltan Council to approve their painkiller, and Red tells her to leave the negotiations to him. Rit then talks about her salary, and she settles on a really low amount, but Red agrees, as he doesn't want to push her, or she might insist on working for free. The scene then cuts to Red and Rit in town, and Red mentions that Zoltan is a place with no need for the hero, as it's far removed from the world. They then go to a carpenter named Storm Thunder, and Storm Thunder is surprised to find out that Red and Rit have started to live together. Rit mentions that she is here to buy a bed, and she tries to buy a double bed, but Red asks her to make it a single, and she agrees. Rit then asks Storm Thunder to deliver the bed, as it won't fit in her item box, and she leaves the store. Rit then mentions that the things at Storm Thunder's place are really good, and Red states that Storm Thunder has leveled his craftsman blessing to the max, so it's only natural. Red then explains that their god, Demis, grants a divine blessing to all living things at birth, and lineage and education have no impact on the blessing granted. Orphans from slums have been granted the general blessing, and even kings have been granted the thief blessing. Everyone's success depends on whether they can level up their blessings, and the only way to level them up is by slaying people and monsters who have a blessing. It's the same with every blessing whether they are battle-related or not. Due to this the world is ripe with violence, and Red then notices a kid named Adami bullying Tanta, and he notices that Adami is using his skill to fight. He stops them, and Adami flees after seeing Red's skills. Red then notices that Tanta is not badly injured, and Tanta introduces his friend Al to Red, and Red notices that his knee is injured. Tanta then notices Rit, and he is also surprised to find out that Rit has moved in with Red. Red then patches up Al, and Rit asks them why they were fighting. Tanta mentions that it's Adami's fault, and he asked them to move because they were in his way. Red states that Adami is already developing his skill, and Al mentions that he wasn't always so violent, but he has been a hothead lately. Red states that it must be because of his blessing which is most likely Bar Brawler, and he explains that blessings can influence a person's personality. Red mentions that the problem is that Adami has a high affinity for his blessing, and his blessing inclines him towards resorting to violence to solve any problem he comes across. Al then states that he doesn't want a blessing if that is the case, and Tanta tells him that the church elders won't like it if they hear him. Red then finds out that Al has the weapon master blessing, and he tells him that this is a great blessing which enables him to master a weapon of his choice. Al states that he doesn't want this blessing if it is going to make him turn out like Adami, and Rit tells him that she can understand that blessings can be scary sometimes, as it's like their life is completely decided by it, and Red mentions that Rit's blessing is Forest Scout. This means that she is a scout for forest dwellers, and this may be the reason why she couldn't live quietly in the castle, as her blessing craves freedom. Red then explains to Al that they are not slave to their blessings, and it's only a part of them which they can control. If Al manages to control it then his blessing will be useful in the future, and Al is happy to hear this. Tanta and Al then leave, and Red and Rit go to get their new painkiller approved by the council. A man named Dan from the council refuses to approve their drug, and he asks them to get out of their face, as he is really busy. Rit then mentions that they have no choice, but to go over his head now, and she talks with someone who ranks above Dan. She tells her problem to him, and he apologizes for Dan's behavior, and he informs Rit that this is because they approved a remedy a month ago, and now they have found out that it's being used as an illegal drug. It's spreading fast on the black market, and it is being mass-produced outside of town. Since it's spreading so fast, they believe that the maker was targeting illicit use from the start. This has done great harm to their reputation, and Dan who is in charge of the new remedies is dealing with angry townsfolks non-stop. The man then states that he will approve their painkiller as it's a request from Rit, and afterwards Red and Rit leave the council building. Red apologizes for letting Rit do all the heavy lifting after telling her that he will take care of negotiations, and Rit mentions that there is no need for an apology, and she is happy that she can help. Red then thanks Rit for this, and the scene cuts to them in their shop. Red mentions that it will take some time for the word about the painkiller's effectiveness to spread, and Rit states that for the time being they will need a hit remedy which is fast acting in the sales department. Rit then suggests that Red should serve food alongside his medicines as he is a great cook, and Red thinks that he is not that good of a cook, and he has never heard of an apothecary that serves food, but this gives him another idea. 
He then makes a nutritional supplement that prevents cold and other illnesses and helps recover from exhaustion. He mentions that this medicine is difficult to take because it's bitter, and he makes some cookies in which he mixes the medicine, and due to his preparation skill, the medicine doesn't lose its nutritional value. He then notices that it tastes good, and this could be their hit product. The scene then cuts to Rit handing out free samples of their new cookies while advertising its effectiveness, and by the end of the day Red manages to sell out all of the cookies. He then lifts Rit up in happiness, and he states that it's all thanks to her. Rid is happy to hear this, and Red thanks her for being there for him. We then see Danan angry at Ares for not being able to discover any new leads on the weapon they are after, and he mentions that they have just been wasting their time in this desert. He states that this never happened when Gideon was still here, and he tries to go find Gideon. Ares tries to stop him, but Danan doesn't listen to him, and he mentions that banishing Gideon from this party was a fatal mistake. Ares states that he left on his own free will, and the hero then comes there, and she allows Danan to go look for Gideon. Theodora then asks Danan what he is going to do, and Danan states that he has no choice but to look for Gideon, and he asks Theodora if she thinks that Ares killed Gideon because he was in his way. Theodora mentions that this is what Yarandrila thought, before leaving their party, and Danan mentions that Gideon was a tactician worthy of his respect. Theodora states that even so Danan never failed to criticize his combat blunders, and Danan mentions that this is the kind of man he is, but he never thought of Gideon as a liability. Theodora states that Danan should let Gideon know of this when he sees him the next time, and she mentions Ares won't be able to kill someone so skilled, that easily. Danan thinks that she is right, and he goes off to find Gideon. The scene then cuts to Red tending to his medicinal plant garden, and he states that he never imagined that he would have a future like this. He mentions that he would have imagined fighting the demons by the hero's side, or receiving a small domain as a noble, but this never came to his mind. He thinks that this life is not bad, and Oliver and his party then comes to Red's shop, and they are surprised to see Rit there. Rit tells them that she stopped adventuring and started working here, and she is living together with Red. Maya, the girl in their party is so surprised by this, that she runs out of the shop, and the other members go after her. Red thinks that Rit working here can shock anyone, and Rit then asks Red if he would like to have some mead. Red wonders why, and Rit states that there is no reason, and she suddenly had a craving for it, but her expressions say otherwise. Red mentions that they don't have any on them, and Rit goes to buy some. Red wonders what he should make for dinner to go with the mead, and Albert then comes to his shop. Albert wonders if Red is happy to live in a shabby store like this, and Red states that he is happy with his life as he has finally opened his own apothecary. Albert is not happy with Red's answer, and he asks him if he was the one who slayed the owlbear. Red denies this, and Albert mentions that he knows that it was Red who dealt the final blow, as that wound was from a sword much duller than his, like the bronze sword that Red has. Red still tries to deny his claims, and Albert tries to force Red to show his true skills, by trying to attack him, but Red doesn't react at all. Rit then comes there, she notices this, and she tries to kill Albert, but Red stops her, and he mentions that Albert came here to ask him something, and he was testing him. Rit then asks Albert to leave, and she asks Red if he is alright, Red states that he is fine, and we see that Rit is angry at Albert, but Red asks her to not do something to him, as he is the only B-rank adventurer in Zoltan right now. Red then states that for now they should enjoy this mead, and he thanks Rit for getting upset on his behalf. The scene then cuts to them having dinner along with the mead, and Rit states that now their shop is almost set up, but they will also be needing a bathtub. Red mentions that he has talked to Storm Thunder about this, and Rit states that they will need a tub big enough for two, and this makes Red embarrassed, but Rit states that she only meant the size. She mentions that it would be nice to take a relaxing bath after work, and Red asks her if she would like to try his favorite sauna in this case. Rit agrees, and Red mentions that they should go on their day off. The scene then cuts to Red in the sauna on their day off, and he has a competition with Gons, and Storm Thunder to see who can stay longer in the sauna. They all refuse to give up, and in the end Gons faints due to the heat. They take him out, and Storm Thunder notices that this place is quite empty. The owner named Zef states that this is because of the new public bathhouse that the nobles built recently, and along with the sauna it has a restaurant, and a massage parlor. People like to go there nowadays, and Zef states that he can't compete with something like that. Gonza's sister, and Tanta's mother named now states that Zef shouldn't give up without a fight, 
and she mentions that she will keep coming here, and the others agree with her. The scene cuts to now discussing with Rit, what they will do if Zef closes up shop, and Rit wonders if they can do something about this. She mentions that they could promote his place if he had something that the big bathhouse doesn't have, and they try throwing different ideas together, but none of them are good enough. Red then serves some tea to everyone, and Rit asks him if he has any ideas. Tanta then praises the smell of the herb tea that Red has prepared and this gives Red an idea. He goes to Zef's sauna, and he gives him a potpourri sack. He explains that with this Zef can create a steam therapy bath, and he made this sack to apply it to the sauna. He mentions that they just need to hang this over the sauna stove, so the herb's aroma can mingle with the steam. Zef thinks that this could work, and Red mentions that he can provide Zef a steady supply if it does. They then test it out, and they think that it's good. Zef thinks that he could stay in business with this, and as thanks he lets them try his new sauna for free. The scene cuts to Red enjoying the sauna by himself, and he states that the potpourri sack was a good idea. Rit and now then come there as well, and Red gets embarrassed, and he asks them why they are in the men's bath. They mention that only this bath has the potpourri sack for now, and they also wanted to experience it. Red states that this isn't fine as now is a married woman, and now states that it's alright, as she does have a towel on. Red then tries to leave the sauna, but Rit stops him, and they enjoy the sauna together. The sight of Rit in nothing but a towel is too much for Red, and this makes him overheat, and he faints. We then see that Zef's business has boomed ever since he used those potpourri sacks, and one day while returning from his sauna Rit tells Red that she is glad that Zef's customers have returned. She then tells Red that the other day she wanted to drink mead because in Lagervia when a couple gets married, they take a month off from work and drink mead together. When she remembered this, she felt like drinking mead, and Red is embarrassed and happy to hear this. They then head back home, and elsewhere we see that Ares is angry that Danan left their party when they needed him the most. T. Say then sets up their tent, and afterwards Theodora asks her if she is disappointed with their new party. T. Say mentions that she is not, and Theodora states that it wasn't always like this. She mentions that they never had these problems when Gideon was here, but their party fell apart when he left, and she wonders why Rudy let Gideon leave the party if they really needed him. The scene then cuts to some rough-looking men visiting Red and Rit's shop, and Red talks to them. Their leader introduces himself as Gallatin, and he mentions that he is a senior at the Adventurer's Guild. He states that he has heard that Rit is living here, and he mentions that he is here to talk to her. Red mentions that he will have to wait until they are open, and Gallatin states that he should consult Rit before answering, and Red mentions that he knows what Rit will say, and he asks him to wait even after they try to threaten him. They then agree to wait, and after opening up the shop Rit goes to talk to them. While she talks to them, a man from the Thief's Guild asks Red to sever ties with Rit in return for an elven coin which is worth a lot, but Red refuses after telling him that Rit's value is beyond price. The man then leaves, and he asks Red to let him know if he changes his mind, as they would be happy to bargain. Red mentions that he should just give up, and meanwhile Gallatin, and the others also try to convince Rit to return to adventuring, but she refuses to go back telling them that she has signed a lifetime employment contract to work with Red. She mentions that they should not try running Red out of town because she will be going with him if they do, and she goes inside the store. Rit then finds out that Red heard everything she said, and she gets embarrassed. Afterwards Red gives Rit a bracelet with an amber stone, and he mentions that it's a down payment on her lifelong employment. Rit mentions that she might get a wrong idea with a gift like this, and Red states that he would like to buy her something else in this case, and he asks her what her favorite gemstone is. Rit mentions that she would be fine with anything as long as it's picked by him, and the scene cuts to the leader of the Thief's Guild named Big Hawk asking one of its guild members a named Deer to get Rit to start adventuring again. He explains that the Thief's Guild also doesn't want Rit to retire, as any group which ends up on her bad side has to pay a pretty hefty price. Even the Thief's Guild backs off when she gets involved, but the situation is manageable as long as she is in the guild. If she is alone, then she becomes an uncertainty, and this is bad for business. Big Hawk states that he has heard that Deer knows Rit's weakness, and Deer mentions that he does, and he wonders what he will get in return for this. Big Hawk states that officially the Thief's Guild will have nothing to do with this, but he can give Deer an easy job of hauling cargo, and the said cargo might contain money. Hearing this Deer accepts the job, and meanwhile in Red and Rit's shop, we see that Rit is happy to be living with Red. 
She thinks that she never expected this to happen when they parted ways in Lagervia, and she remembers that with the demon army on all sides, and the captain of the guards fallen, Lagervia was in dire straits. In order to find a way out of their crisis, they decided to ask for reinforcement from Sunland, but they had to slip through the demon lord's heavily guarded lines. Gideon came up with a plan to go through the bewitching woods which was considered impassable even for the demon lord's army, and their first stop was a village at the edge of the woods. There, Gideon met Yarandrila, and he told everyone that she is going to guide them out of the bewitching woods. She has the blessing of the singer of trees, and she can converse with plants, and have them come to her aid. Yarandrila mentioned that the magic of the woods doesn't affect those born within it, and she can also find the right way by asking the plants. Gideon stated that the demon lord's army won't expect them to pass through the bewitching woods, and Rit was jealous to see that Gideon trusted Yarandrila enough to place the fate of their party in her hands. Gideon then asked Theodora and Danan to protect the villagers while they go to Sunland, and he noticed Ares talking with some mercenaries that he hired. They then went through the forest, and on the way Rit was jealous to see Yarandrila so close to Gideon. Rit thought that Gideon would probably not waste his time on a depressed princess like her, and Gideon then asked her if she is alright, but Rit angrily told him that she doesn't want him to worry about her. She regretted saying that, and Yarandrila then noticed the chemistry between the two of them, and she asked Rit if she would like to take a break and have a bath, as there is a river close to here. Rit took some time to think, but Yarandrila dragged her to the river, and meanwhile Gideon handled Ares who got angry because he thought that they don't have any time to waste. Rit and Yarandrila then took a bath together, and Yarandrila asked Rit if she likes Gideon. Rit got embarrassed, but she accepted that she does, and Yarandrila told her that Gideon also seems to be taken by her, but she needs to work on her habit of getting angry when she is embarrassed. She stated that instead Rit should try to be playful and show her affection to Gideon, and Rit mentioned that this won't be easy. She asked Yarandrila if she also likes Gideon, but Yarandrila mentioned that she doesn't, and she told her that she only sees him as the most trustworthy human. She explained that high elves have longer lifespans than humans, and they make it a point to not fall in love with them, and she has learned this lesson the hard way. She stated that she wants Gideon to be happy, and she mentioned that Gideon always shoulders a greater share of the burden of his comrades, and this will never change. She stated that she thinks that Rit would be a great match for him, as she could support him. Rit mentioned that she has only been supported by him, and Yarandrila stated that it would be fine, as she does love him. The scene then cut to Yarandrila guiding Gideon and the others out of the forest, and she noticed that there are some demon lord forces on the outskirts of the forest. Gideon thought that the mercenaries that Ares hired might have leaked their plans, and the demon lord's army might have promised to make the mercenaries into nobles in a conquered land. Gideon then wondered what they should do now, and he stated that he will distract the enemy, and he asked the others to break through their lines, and get reinforcements. Rudy agreed to his plan, and she asked Yarandrila to go with him. Rit tried to object, but Rudy told her that she doesn't need her consent to order her teammates. Gideon told Rit that he is going to be fine, and Rudy and the others then managed to get reinforcements from Sunland, and they came back to rescue Gideon and Yarandrila. They noticed that Gideon and Yarandrila were surrounded by a large number of troops, and Rudy slayed them all herself. She then hugged the tired Gideon, and she apologized for sending him in alone, and she stated that she had no choice. Gideon told her that he is fine, and Rudy mentioned that she will never do this again. Rit mentions that she didn't join the hero's party after that battle, as she had to help rebuild Lagervia, and she knew that she shouldn't come between Gideon and Rudy back then. She thinks that running into Gideon in Zoltan was a miracle, and Red then reminds Rit that she has a delivery to make. The scene cuts to Rit returning after making the delivery, and she meets Deer. Deer asks Rit to return to adventuring or he is going to tell everyone that she is a princess, and Rit mentions that she doesn't care as she is not trying to hide that in the first place. Deer still tries to threaten her, and Rit attacks him. Deer mentions that he is going to tell Lagervia that she is living with Red, and Rit states that he can do as he pleases. She mentions that she doesn't care about her status in Lagervia, and she doesn't need fame and fortune as long as she can live with Red. Deer wonders how she can live a mundane life like this with a blessing like hers, and Rit mentions that he may be right about what her blessing yearns for, but this is what she wants. She then leaves, and she goes back to the apothecary. Elsewhere Riddy thinks that she doesn't need to sleep, but the nights are long and boring. It was better when her brother was here, and she remembers the time when Ares told her that Gideon left their party. 
He mentioned that Gideon said that he will keep an eye on the demon lord's army, as he feels more useful as a scout, and he tried to stop him, but Gideon had already made up his mind. Rudy asked him why Gideon didn't tell her that directly, and Ares mentioned that maybe he didn't want to look bad in front of his sister. Ares then tried to console Rudy, but Rudy thought that Ares did something to her brother, and she attacked him. She tried to go look for her brother, but she stopped and she healed Ares. She thought that she must continue her journey as the hero, and she thinks that as the hero it's her duty to defeat the demon lord, but now there is a hole where her brother once used to be. The scene then cuts to Red delivering Dr. Newman's order of medicines, and while in his clinic he hears the scream of a man. Him and the doctor go over to check, and they find an unconscious man. Seeing this Red tells Newman to give the man an antidote made with grey starfish grass, and Newman asks him how Red knows that this man needs an antidote. Red mentions that he has taken his first aid skill to mastery level, and like a doctor he can tell how to relieve symptoms even if he doesn't know what caused them. The doctor listens to Red, and they take the man to his clinic afterwards. Newman states that the man is out of the woods for now, and he mentions that this was caused by a drug overdose. He states that the exact way to treat it is still unknown, but he never thought about using grey starfish grass. He mentions that Red saved the day today, and he asks him to stock up on more grey starfish grass, as they are going to see more patients like him. Red then returns to the apothecary, and Rit mentions that he took too long, and Red tells her that he ran into some trouble, and he mentions that he will tell her about it over lunch. They then have some omelette for lunch, and Red informs Rit that one of the doctor's neighbors overdosed due to the narcotic that they heard about from the Zoltan's council. He states that he was helping to make sure that the man was okay, and Rit can't believe that they already have cases of overdose, and she wonders who would sell a dangerous drug like that. Red states that it's not their job to track them down, as they are just an apothecary, and he mentions that they should go and have some fun by the river on their next day off. Rit gets excited hearing this, and the scene cuts to them riding rented drakes to the river. They race over there, and they arrive at the river. Red makes a tent, and Rit unveils her swimsuit which makes Red blush. The two of them then play in the water, and afterwards they have some barbecue. They sit together, and neither of them know what to say at times like these. Red mentions that he thought that Rit would be used to this kind of thing, as she was really forward when she showed up at his shop. Rit states that it's because she thought that Red had forgotten her, and she mentions that she thought that Red would be more used to these types of situations. Red wonders why she thought that, and Rit states that it's because she tries her hardest to get his attention, but he never bats an eye. Red tells her that it's because he didn't want to come off as desperate or lovesick, and Rit then kisses Red. The scene then cuts to the hero's party about to reach the ruins of the previous demon lord, and Ares mentions that the weapon that they seek must be there. Theodora states that they will set out after they resupply, and T. Say goes to get some water. Rudy comes there to drink some water, and T. Say wonders if she can ask Rudy something. Rudy allows it, and T. Say asks her when she sleeps. Rudy explains to her that she doesn't need to sleep, and she mentions that her blessing conveys resistance to many things, and this includes sleep, food, and temperature. She mentions that her blessing demands her to be the hero, and life's ordinary joys, and sorrows get eliminated as unnecessary to being the hero. She mentions that she is hero, and this means that she can't run away to find her brother. The scene then cuts to the apothecary, and Rit mentions that she has heard from adventurers that the use of the illegal drug is spreading fast, and they say that it makes them feel like a new person. A bloody man then comes into the apothecary, and he asks for help. Red heals him with a potion, and Rit goes out to check up what's going on. She notices that one of Albert's party members is killing the people in town using an axe, and she tries to fight him, and some more people with the axe then come there. Rit thinks that there is something wrong with these people, and Albert kills them all. He apologizes for on his party member's behalf for causing all this ruckus, and Rit asks him what's going on. Albert states that he has no idea, but he never imagined that Campbell would be so vicious. Rit states that Albert didn't have to kill them, and Albert mentions that some of them are still alive, and Rit should treat them before it's too late. Hearing this makes Rit angry at him, and she regains her composure by dropping her weapons. Afterwards reading the paper, Red finds out that there has been no progress on the investigation of that incident, and he wonders if the drug made them insane. Rit states that Campbell was never that strong, and she mentions that the drug must have enhanced his abilities. Red mentions that he is more puzzled that he was using an axe, as the thieves' blessing makes people prefer lighter weapons. 
Rit asks Red if he is going to look into it, and Red mentions that he doesn't know, and he asks Rit what she wants to do. Rit mentions that she just wants to stay like this, and Tanta and Al then come there. Red asks them if they would like to join them for lunch, and the scene cuts to them having lunch together. The kids eat the food, and both them and Rit like it. Al then tells Red that he was touched by his blessing yesterday, and Red asks him how it was. Al mentions that it hasn't given him any urges yet, but he is feeling anxious. Red states that his blessing is weapon master, and he must be feeling that way because he still hasn't decided on a weapon to master. Al asks him if he can't keep being the same person by neglecting his blessing, and Red tells him that everything is going to be more difficult for him without the skills that his blessing grants him. Al asks him if he can't live his life with common skills, and Red tells him that he can, but it will be difficult. Al then wishes that he had the warrior blessing like his father, and Red thinks that Al must want to live a simple life, as warrior is a mundane blessing. Red tells him that he can master a weapon which could help his father with his job if this is the case, and he should take his time deciding which weapon to master. Afterwards Rio, a member of Albert's party comes there, and she apologizes to Rit because their party member caused trouble for her. Rit states that it's alright, and she wonders what Albert is doing now. Rio states that he is taking on more quests to make up for the lazy month in Zoltan, and some of their party members aren't happy about this. She mentions that Albert doesn't understand people who have mundane blessings, and he gets irritated that they can't live up to his expectations. Red thinks that Albert has the blessing of the champion, and it drives him to leave his mark upon history. He ended up in this place, because he failed to fully harness the power of this blessing, and Rio thinks that Albert might leave Zoltan, as he seems too fed up with all of them. Red tells her that he won't, and he mentions that Albert might act like a jerk, but he is just trying to be the champion of Zoltan. The scene then cuts to Danan drinking in a bar, and a hooded man asks him if he is looking for Gideon. The man introduces himself as Bui, and he states that he is also looking for him. He mentions that they should search for him together, and we then see that a storm is about to hit Zoltan. Red and Rit have closed every door and window, and Red serves Rit some warm milk and honey. Rit likes it, and Red tells her that it was Rudy's favorite. Hearing this Rit wonders if Rudy is doing fine, and Red tells her that she must be fine, as the hero's party is in the blood sand desert right now. Red then remembers a stormy night from the time when he was a kid. Back then he asked Rudy if the storm doesn't scare her, and Rudy mentioned that she is not afraid of anything. Red told her that he is scared, and he asked her to hold his hand. The two of them held hands, and Red mentioned that he wasn't actually scared, he just wanted to hold her hand. Rudy asked him why, and Red told her that there is no reason, and he mentioned that people do plenty of things without a reason. He told her that she should let him know if she ever wants to hold his hand for no reason, and Rudy stated that she loves Red. Red mentioned that he loves her as well, and Rudy asked if she can do something else for no reason, and she hugged him. She asked Red if he will stay with her forever, and Red mentioned that he can't promise that, as he will leave to become a knight soon, and he will become stronger so he can adventure with her someday. He mentioned that he will come see her on his days off, and he asked her if she would like him to bring anything special. Rudy told him to bring warm honey with milk, and back in the present Dr. Newman comes to Red's house with an injured owl. The scene then cuts to Al resting on the bed, and Newman states that Al might have been struck by a rock as there were a large number of stone fragments in his wound. Red wonders why he was out on a night like this, and Al wakes up. He panics, and he states that Adami came to his house, and his mom and dad were attacked. He mentions that Adami had an axe, and he asks Red and Rit to help. Afterwards we see Red checking up on Al's parents, and he notices that they are both alive. They wake up, and the doctor asks them what happened. Red thinks that things could have been worse, but he is sure that this attack is going to lead to more problems, as Adami is the son of Moyen, the captain of the guard. After a few days, Red explains that after the attack Adami vanished, and the people of South Marsh, the locality where Al lived, were outraged. They claimed that the town's guard were sheltering him, but the town's guard didn't respond to their allegations. The people of South Marsh were using Al's parents as a symbol of the protest, and right now they are recovering at the mansion of a thief's guild official named Big Hawk. For the time being Al was entrusted to them, and we see Al having breakfast with Red and Rit. Al then asks Rit to teach him the sword, and the scene cuts to Rit teaching him how to use a sword. The two of them train for a while, and afterward Red tells Rit that Al seems to be feeling better now. 
He mentions that it's all thanks to Rit, and Rit states that it's because he was having the time of his life while wielding his weapon, the way he wanted. She mentions that she has never taught anyone how to fight, and she hopes that he doesn't pick her bad habits. She mentions that her master told her that they must learn a lot more than just swinging a sword, and she wonders if she can teach Al everything that her master taught her. Rit states that he knows that she can, and Rit thanks him for the vote of confidence. The scene then cuts to Gons and now coming to meet Red and Rit, and they mention that the town's guard has taken Tanta away. He was just playing in the neighborhood when some guards came and took him away without saying anything. Now states that her husband went to the guardhouse, but they didn't allow him a visit. Al also hears this, and the scene cuts to the three of them visiting Gallatin. Red tells him that he wants the guild to request a joint inquiry with the town's guard, and Gallatin realizes that this way Red can be present at Tanta's questioning. He wonders if he can assume that the champion Rit will be taking care of this matter, and he states that this is a small price to pay to have her in his debt. Gallatin then gives them a letter and he tells them to hand this to the captain. The scene then cuts to Red bringing the letter to the captain, and seeing the letter the soldiers allow Tanta's father to meet him. They notice that Tanta is fine, and afterwards the captain states that he was the one who ordered Tanta to be brought here for questioning. He mentions that he didn't think that his soldiers would tie him up, and he states that he never received word that his father requested a visit. Red then asks the captain why he did all this, and the captain mentions that he wanted to question Tanta, as his men think that Adami was killed by a South Marsh resident. He states that his men always doted on Adami, and then there was an attack which cost the life of one of his men. Campbell and the other perpetrators were also from South Marsh, and due to this his soldiers are doubtful of the residents there. He states that some of his men even doubt that Al saw Adami in his house, and Al shouts that the one he saw was most definitely Adami. The captain mentions that he is not accusing him of lying, but too much about this latest attack is puzzling. He wonders why his parents got away with only minor injuries, and he had no reason to use an axe. This is why his men believe that the attacker wasn't Adami, but someone from South Marsh, and they think that their parents' injuries were staged. Tanta mentions that he also finds it hard to believe as Adami apologized to him about hitting him before, and he said that the bar brawler blessing was giving him some trouble, but his dream is to join the town's guard. He said that he wouldn't hit anyone anymore, and this makes everyone confused. The captain then mentions that he wants to have a talk with Red, and Red asks Mito to take back Tanta and Al to their homes. The captain then mentions that he knows that the two of them have retired from adventuring, but he would like their help. They agree, and Red asks if Adami might have taken the new drug. The captain mentions that his son would never do anything like that, and Red states that he must have noticed that there are some similarities between this attack, and the attack by Campbell. The captain mentions that there is no evidence yet, and he states that there is a possibility that the new drug can give them another blessing. The scene then cuts to Al in Red's shop, and a man named Godwin comes to visit him. Afterwards Red comes back to his shop, but Rid is not with him, and Red states that he will be training Al in her place. The two of them then train, and Al gets tired after a while. Al then asks Red why he is only D rank when he is so strong, and Red tells him that adventuring is not for him. He mentions that he enjoys living a simple life in Zoltan, and Al asks him if he doesn't want to live up to his blessing. Red states that the life of glory is not for him, and he mentions that Al seems to have grown accustomed to his blessing. Al then states that he just got a sword from someone, and it was probably someone connected to Big Hawk. He mentions that he took the sword as he thought that he could become a champion like Rit if he had something like that, but he doesn't know if it was his own thought, or if it was his blessing which was making him think this. Rit states that this is a good question, and he mentions that he should ask his sword if he is not sure. The scene then cuts to Rit taking down a shady person in town, but he blows up into pieces before she can extract any information from him. Some men come to attack her, and they manage to catch her off guard, but she is saved by Danan who defeats them all. Rit then asks Danan why he is here, and Danan mentions that the hero asked him to find Gideon. Rit wonders if he is planning to take him back, and Danan mentions that this was the plan, but it seems that Gideon has found a place to call home. He states that he is not going to take that away from him, and they notice that one of the persons who attacked them is actually a stalker demon. Rit wonders what a mid-tier demon is doing in Zoltan, and she thinks that the person who exploded just now was probably a member of the Thief's Guild. Danan states that he would like for both Red and Rit to help him deal with this, but it would be better if Red doesn't know that he is here. 
he mentions that he would like to exchange information with Rit, and he states that he is staying at an inn in South Marsh. Rit then leaves, and the scene cuts to her returning to the apothecary. She sits on Red's lap to get rid of her exhaustion, and she mentions that a bath would be great right now. Red asks her to not worry as he has already asked Gans to make one for them, and Rit is excited to hear this. Red then tells her that Al received a sword from one of Big Hawk's men today, and Rit takes a look at the sword. She notices that the blade is made of crimson steel, and the hilt is made of ebony. It has a basic magic enhancement, and there is also a locate spell cast on it. It can be used by the caster to know the location of the wielder, and she wonders why Big Hawk would want to know where Al is. Red wonders if he plans to use Al in some way, and the scene then cuts to the three of them in Mogram's store to get Al a custom-made weapon. While Rit and Al do that, Red goes to take a walk around town, and he notices a protest going on in town. He talks to Oliver's party, and he finds out that Big Hawk is paying people to show up for these protests. Due to the protests the town's guard are so busy that they can't investigate the attacks, and he notices that Oliver is also among the protesters. Oliver's party mates ask Red to talk to him about this, and Red mentions that he will. The scene then cuts to the hero's party in some ruins, and they fight a gargantuan demon there. After defeating it they find an airship in the ruins, and they fly it out. Theodora thinks that this is extraordinary, and Tise asks Rudy if there is somewhere she wants to go. Rudy states that there is, but she can't go there, as long as she is the hero, and she mentions that these wings are wasted on her. The scene then cuts to Red and Rit sleeping on the same bed as their double bed has arrived, and they cuddle for a while. They try to go further, but they notice some noise from outside, and they think that Al must have woken up to get some water. Red states that they should continue this another time, and they go back to sleep. The scene then cuts to Rit going around town while covered with a cloak, and she gets surrounded by some rough-looking men. They mistake her for Al, and they ask her to come with them to Big Hawk. Rit then reveals herself, and the men are surprised to see this. She mentions that the locate spell that they cast on this doesn't tell them who is carrying it around, and she thinks that they took the bait. Rit then fights the men, and she manages to beat most of them easily. One of them transforms into a demon, and Rit fights it. Afterwards we see a soldier defending Al, and some men from the thief's guild come there. The soldier lets them in willingly, and they capture Al saying that they are going to make him into South Marsh's hero, and we see that Red is also hiding among them. They bring him to Big Hawk, and Big Hawk states that unlike the soft people in Zoltan, he was raised in the Duchy of Daikon's slums, and he slaughtered all those who opposed him. Because of this right now he is so powerful that the fools on the council can't do anything to him. He states that he is still not satisfied, and he mentions that he has what it takes to rise even higher. He states that he would make some big changes in Zoltan if he were the top dog here, and he mentions that this is where the drug comes in. It is known as the Devil's Blessing, and it's made from the hearts of 50 Axe Demons. He states that he has been flooding the market with it, and until now only one blessing was granted by the Almighty Demis, but most people agonized over the fact that the role granted by their blessing isn't what they wanted in life. He mentions that his blessing is Master Torture, and this condemns him to a life in a dark hole filled with the stench of the blood, sweat, and piss. He states that it's a worthless blessing, and he never wished for this. He explains that the devil's blessing is their savior, and it grants them a new blessing. In doing so it gives them a chance to lead a new life. He states that the groundwork has already been laid, and Al is the spark they need. He then brings Adami there, and he mentions that he only took that drug because he wanted to be a fine guardsman like his father. The scene then cuts to Big Hawk greeting a bunch of people gathered at the Thief's Guild, and he states that yesterday he went to the Council of Zoltan to protest against Adami, but the Townsguard still can't find him even after deploying all of its members. He mentions that they are hiding him because he is the captain's son, and he asks the people if this makes them furious. The people state that it does, and Big Hawk mentions that he has proof about this. Two soldiers then come there with Adami, and Big Hawk states that these soldiers know the meaning of justice. The soldiers confirm that the townsguard took part in hiding Adami, and Big Hawk states that the time for forgiveness is over, and they will fight a revolution in the name of justice. He asks Al to slay Adami using a sword, and Al hesitates to do this. Big Hawk still insists, and Al takes the sword, but instead of beheading Adami he frees him. Godwin then shows Adami an axe, 
and Big Hawk explains that the devil's blessing causes a murderous intent whenever Adami lays his eyes on an axe. Adami then takes the axe, and he tries to fight Al, but Red who was watching all this stops him, and he takes both Al and Adami out of there. Afterwards Red gives Adami a tonic to suppress the urges of his blessing, and he meets Bui, and we find out that Rit has told him about Bui, and she has been working together with him. Red states that they should proceed as planned, and Albert and some other men come to stop them. Red faces against them while Bui and the others get out of there, and he has a confrontation with Albert. After fighting him Albert finds out that Red is a fighter with strength comparable to his, and it is revealed that Big Hawk has actually been possessed by a contact demon. Red realizes that the contract demon was the one pulling the sting all this time, and Red states that it must have taken a lot of time for Big Hawk to reach the top of the Thieves' Guild as Zoltan is a lazy place, and there is no room for talent or ambition here. The leaders are determined solely by seniority, and Big Hawk mentions that this is right. Red wonders if this is why he zeroed in on someone like Albert, and Big Hawk mentions that demons can only form contracts with those strong of will, and who have a darkness in their heart. Albert then states that he is sick and tired of this place, and there is no glory for him to be had here. He mentions that his life would have been a complete waste if he had died in Zoltan, but now he is going to be a hero. He states that he might have forged a contract with a demon, but he is not going to take part in any evil schemes. Red tells him that people have died because of this incident, and Albert mentions that it was a necessary sacrifice. He states that he wants to unite Zoltan to fight against the Demon King's army, and he formed a contract to dedicate his life fighting the Demon Lord. He mentions that he is going to remake Zoltan into a military power, and have it fight under the banner of the hero. He asks Red to join him, as he also has what it takes to be a hero, and Red mentions that he doesn't want to be a hero. Soldiers from the town's guard then surround everyone, and Galadin tells them that they have underestimated their town. Albert wonders why Red insists on throwing everything away when he can be a hero, and Red tells him that running an apothecary is good enough for him. Albert then states that he will only be a criminal if he is arrested by the town's guard, and he asks Red to at least let him be defeated by a hero. He tries to attack Red, but Red easily cuts off his hand, and Albert can't believe what things have come to. Red tells him that being a hero is not about being physically strong, and he is not hero material. He hoped for Albert to be the one to save Zoltan, as no one here wanted to be a hero more than him, and Albert wonder why it came to this. Al and Adami then go back to the Thief's Guild, and Al explains to everyone that all this was a big misunderstanding. He states that him and Adami have become friends now, and it was actually a demon in Adami's form that attacked his family. He mentions that they will also become a demon if they continue to take that drug, and everyone understands. They all go home, and five days later, we see Red and Rit taking a bath together. They mention that spending the reward they got for solving this matter on the bath was a good idea, and Rit gets closer to Red, and she mentions that Red could have rejoined the hero's party if he had gone with Albert. Red states that he doesn't want to go back anymore, as he wants to be with her right now. He mentions that he loves it here, and he wants to be by her side right now. Afterwards we see Bui meeting Big Hawk in the prison, and we see that he knows the name of the demon possessing Big Hawk. Hearing his name the demon, Belial realizes that Bui is actually Shisan Don, and Shisan Don mentions that he never expected Belial to start peddling the devil's blessing. He states that things could have turned bad if the humans found out that they don't actually need demon hearts to make that drug, and he mentions that Belial should know that the drug has the potential to unleash humankind's true power. Belial states that he did this to destroy heretics like Shisan Don, and he revokes his contract with Big Hawk. He then breaks out of prison with Albert, and the scene cuts to Al leaving on his first adventure with his newly formed party. Red, Rit and Tonta wish him luck on his journey, and elsewhere we see Belial and Albert meeting the hero Rudy. We then find out that the hero and T-Say have stolen the airship and they have gone off on their own. Theodora notices Belial in the hero's tent, and she finds out that Rudy has left her badge behind. Meanwhile in Zoltan Bui gets promoted to be rank adventurer, and the other adventurers think that he just signed up the other day. They are surprised to see him rank up so fast, but they think that it's understandable as he did help resolve the Devil's Blessing incident. Afterwards we find out that Rudy and T-Say are actually going to Zoltan, and T-Say asks Rudy why they are going there. Rudy mentions that there is a medicine maker there, and she thinks that she has to pin all her hopes on this medicine now. She remembers what Belial told her about this medicine, 
and we see that he told her that this is a drug made from the axe demon's hearts. It gives rise to the axe demon blessing, and it allows the user to transfer blessing levels. One dose transfers one level of an innate blessing to the devil's blessing, and by using this drug to temporarily weaken her blessing, she can quickly level up even by slaying weaker foes. The Devil's Blessing also prevents her combat ability from weakening, and this drug can help her defeat the Demon Lord. Rudy is surprised that this can weaken her blessing, and she takes the drug saying that curses and poisons don't affect her anyways. Belial thinks that this is bad as the drug transforms the slain axe demon's malice into a curse, and binds the demon blessing to it. He thinks that the axe demon's blessing can be lost if the curse doesn't manifest, and back in the present Rudy thinks that she would like a steady supply of this drug. She then asks Tise to treat her like a normal traveler in Zoltan, as she wants to hide the fact that she is the hero. Tise thinks that she can do that, and she wonders if the hero can pretend to be a commoner. She asks Rudy if she knows anything about being a traveler, and Rudy states that she doesn't, and this is why she wants to Tise to help her if her act is unconvincing. Tise agrees, and the scene cuts to Red's shop. We see that he is not getting any customers, and Rit tells him that people prefer to stay home when it's this cold outside. She mentions that having something to sell in the cold would solve the problem, and Rit asks her for some suggestions. Rit states that they sell hand warmers in Lagervia, and Rit states that this is a great idea. The scene then cuts to Red handing one of his hand warmer samples to Gons, and he states that this can provide warmth for 15 hours. He hands some of the samples to the other people he knows in town, and at night he meets up with Rit. He tells her that the hand warmers were really popular among the people, and it starts to snow. Red thinks that he should have kept one of those hand warmers for himself, and Rit shows him that she has one. The two of them share the hand warmer, and they take a walk together. They then sit on a bench, and snuggle up to keep each other warm. Red looks at Rit, and Rit mentions that he will miss out the snow if he keeps looking at her, as he can also see her later. Red states that this is the only time he can see her amid the falling snow. This makes the both of them embarrassed, and they kiss each other. The scene then cuts to Rudy and Tse landing in the forest near Zoltan, and Tse helps her blend in by giving her some common clothes. They then head to Zoltan, and on the way they notice a knight barring the bridge. The knight introduces himself as Otto, and he states that they will have to give him a hundred perils if they want to pass. Rudy refuses to pay, and the knight tries to attack her, but she defeats him easily. The scene then cuts to Rudy at Zoltan's entrance, and we see her carrying around a big monster. She mentions that she took it out, as it would have caused trouble the next spring, and the guard at the gate goes to fetch a butcher. T. Say then states that they should go find an inn to stay, and we see Red arriving in town at late night. The guard is about to close up the gate, and he asks Red if he would like to grab a drink. The scene then cuts to the two of them in an Odin stall, and T. Say comes there as well. Red notices that T. Say is short, but she is in good shape, and she looks like a pro. He thinks that she has a low profile, so her work must require her to avoid attention. She can either be a thief, a spy, or an assassin. T. Say wonders if Red has noticed her concealed weapons, and she notices that he has wounds that have been treated and healed all over his strong body. He is drinking less which indicates caution, and he seems to have seen a fair amount of action. They both think that the other person is a pro, and T. Say then buys some Odin for Rudy, and she leaves. Afterwards we see T. Say and Rudy at the inn, and T. Say mentions that she met someone who could be trouble. It was a young man, and he noticed her concealed weapons. Rudy mentions that he could be the top adventurer in Zoltan, and she states that she has heard that this title is currently owned by someone called Bui. T. Say mentions that the man she saw had the bearing of a knight, and she states that they must decide whether to work with him or against him. Rudy mentions that they can't work with him, as the alchemist she seeks is in prison right now, and Tisei thinks that if they plan a prison break then both the town, and that man will see them as outlaws. She mentions that they must come up with a plan, and the scene cuts to Red and Rit meeting a fairy dragon. She introduces herself as Kurakuru, and she states that she wants Red's help. The scene then cuts to Red and Rit at a fairy hamlet on the outskirts of Zoltan, and Red asks Kurakururu where the patient is. Kurakururu takes him to the patient, and we find out that it's an Undine, a water archfey. He examines her, and he finds out that she needs heart medication, and he mentions that something to heal the spiritual damage should do the trick. 
The Undine wonders if this is why she has bags under her eyes. And Red mentions that this isn't an illness, it's magic targeting those with power, and it's most likely a curse that zaps spiritual energy. The Undine is surprised that she was cursed, and Rick can't believe that someone in Zoltan is more powerful than an Archfey, and Red gives her a medicine which will stop the further loss of spiritual energy. Rick then asks him if the cold-like illness spreading around the town is because of the same curse, and Red thinks that the symptoms are similar. The scene then cuts to T-Say and Rudy visiting Godwin in prison, and Rudy mentions that she wants Godwin to make some devil's blessing for her. Godwin gets scared seeing the cold look in her eyes, and he states that he will do whatever she wants. They then break him out of prison, and they tie him up somewhere secluded. The next morning T-Say asks Rudy what she wants to do today, and Rudy mentions that she would like to heal Godwin's wounds, and she wonders if there is an apothecary near here. She mentions that she doesn't want to use healing hands, as she would like to avoid revealing her real identity. She then goes to Red's apothecary with T-Say, and she notices Red there, and she hugs him. The scene then cuts to them having a talk, and T-Say introduces herself, and she mentions that she joined the hero's party after Red left. Rudy then asks Red if he is living with someone, and Red states that he is, and it's Rit from Lagervia. He then thinks that Ares must have told them that he left to keep tabs on the demon lord army, but Rudy mentions that he said that Red had fled. Red thinks that he should have known that Ares wouldn't keep his promise, and he tells Rudy what actually happened. He apologizes for leaving her like that, and Rudy asks him to return, and she mentions that she will make sure that Ares keeps his mouth shut. She states that they can even kick him out, but they can't do without Red. She mentions that the party has broken apart ever since Red left, and Red states that he thought that their adventures were going smoothly. Rudy asks him what he is going to do, and Red states that he can't leave as he has found a reason to stay here. Rudy mentions that she will also move here in this case, and everyone in the room is surprised to hear this. Rit then comes there, and she is surprised to see Rudy. They all sit down, and Red asks Rudy why she is here. Rudy states that she came here to find Red, as they need him to defeat the Demon Lord's army, but she is also looking for someone else. Someone who knows how they can defeat the Demon Lord, but she has already found them. Rit then asks Red what he is going to do, and Red mentions that he is going to stay here with her. Rit gets worried about Rudy after hearing this, but Rudy mentions that Rit doesn't need to worry as she is also going to move to this town. She states that she will leave for now as she has something to do, and Red asks her to come by whenever she wants. The scene then cuts to Rudy heading to her inn, and her blessing tries to stop her from staying here and abandoning her duties as the hero, so she weakens her blessing once more with the drug. The scene then cuts to Rit asking Red if he is sure about not going with Rudy, and Red mentions that he is sure. He states that Rudy can stay here if she wants to, and he mentions that she might bear the fate of the world on her shoulders, but she is still a 17 years old girl. Rit mentions that they need some time to think about this, and she states that they should talk about this with Rudy again. The scene then cuts to Tisei noticing that Godwin's wounds are healing up nicely, and Godwin asks her when they will be leaving Zoltan. Tisei tells him that there has been a change of plans, and they will stay here for a little longer. Godwin states that it won't be good if the people of Zoltan find him, and Tisei mentions that she knows this. She then tells Rudy that they can't keep Godwin locked up for much longer, and she mentions that he is saying that he needs a fully equipped workshop to make the drug. Rudy states that before leaving she has to search an ancient elven ruin, and Tisei mentions that this would be a great place for a hideout. Rudy then heads towards Tisei with an intense look, and this scares her and she backs down with an offensive position. She then realizes that Rudy was just trying to pet Mr. Crawley Wally, and Tisei thinks that she made a horrible mistake, and she can't believe that they failed to communicate to such an extent that she ended up having to draw her blade. She thinks that the person standing in front of her is not the hero, it's just a girl who is puzzled because she can't figure out why her friend got upset, and because of her lack of communication skills, she has been isolated this whole time. Tisei then apologizes to Rudy, and she mentions that Rudy should say something first if she wants to pet her friend. Rudy understands, and she pets Mr. Crawley Wally, and this helps Tisei become better friends with Rudy. Elsewhere we see that Bowie is also trying to find the ruins that Rudy is after, and he notices that someone has become aware of the curse, and magic power is not accumulating anymore. The scene then cuts to Rudy and Tisei running Red's shop, but the adventurers run away seeing her, as she is giving off an intimidating vibe. Tisei mentions that Rudy should try smiling, but she is not good with that. 
Red then asks Rudy if she would like to walk around the town with him, and the scene cuts to him showing her the sauna. Rudy wishes to try it, and they go inside. Red introduces Rudy as his sister to Zeph, and after sweating in the sauna for a while the two of them drink some milk. Afterwards they head to the market, and we see that Ares has found out that Rudy is somewhere near the wall at the world's end. Albert was the one who told him this, and he asks Theodora if he was of any help. Theodora mentions that they will be able to find the hero because of him, and she states that they will buy him a prosthetic hand at their next stop. Albert then mentions that the man who severed his hand was a weird one, and he can't understand how he can be so powerful, and yet not become a champion. He states that the church teaches them to live a life befitting of their blessing, and Theodora mentions that people are more than their blessings, they also have free will of their own, and they are allowed to choose a path for themselves. She states that this must be why the Almighty gave them free wills, and Albert mentions that he doesn't know. The scene then cuts to Rudy drinking some warm milk with honey that Red prepared for everyone, and Red mentions that they also have a bath, and he wonders if Rudy would like to take a soak before returning to the inn. Rudy asks Red if she can take a bath with him, but Red tells her that they are too old for that, and Rudy then asks Red instead. Rid agrees, and Tise states that she will join them, as she loves taking a bath in different places, and she has been dubbed a bath critic. The scene then cuts to the three of them in the bath, and Rudy asks Rit if she has taken a bath with her brother. Rit mentions that she has, and Rudy states that she did as well, but it was when they were kids. Rit asks Rudy what Red was like as a kid, and Rudy mentions that her brother was strong when he was young, but she was really weak back then. She tells Rit that her first battle happened when she was searching for a child who got lost in the mountains. She managed to find the child, but they were attacked by an owl bear. She tried to fight it, as the hero's blessing prioritized saving others before herself, but she was badly injured by the owl bear. She healed herself, and she kept on fighting, but the girl she saved ran away while she was doing this. Red then saved her by killing the owl bear, and he was glad to see that she was all right. Rudy mentions that her brother always stayed by her side, and he shed tears for her when she was in pain, and this made her happy. She states that she doesn't enjoy baths as much as she used to, as her body has grown resistant to all manner of things. She never feels hot or cold, and the only reason baths feel good for her is because she remembers how they used to feel. The same is true for the milk she just drank, and she mentions that she didn't like Rit when they first met, and she was envious of her because Rit was free to laugh, cry or get angry when she felt like it. She envied how she was getting closer to her brother, and she tells Rit and T say that this is who the hero really is. She mentions that she didn't want to be the hero, and instead she wanted to be like Rit. Hearing this Tse thinks that at this point Red is the only one who can save Rudy, but she remembers that Rit was fixated on the hero's blessing, and it was Red who saved her from that, and she thinks that just like this, she can also be the one to save Rudy. The scene then cuts to Tse talking with Red and Rit, and she tells them about what they have been doing in Zoltan. Rit wonders if Rudy will be addicted if she keeps taking that drug, and Red tells her that she should be fine until the full immunity of the hero's blessing lasts, but that drug also has a blessing weakening effect. T say wonders if she will start showing signs of addiction if the blessing weakens enough to lose her full resistance. Red mentions that this is likely, and he states that they should check out what Godwin has to say. He wonders if he is at the elven ruins, and T say mentions that he is, and she asks Red if he is angry at Rudy for breaking him out of prison. Red states that he is not pleased about it, but it's fine as no one got hurt. T say mentions that he should let Rudy know this, as she is scared of what he might say if he found out. Red understands, and T say asks him to buy some alchemical tools that Godwin needs before heading there. Red understands, and Rit mentions that meanwhile they will rent some drakes and head off. Red leaves telling her that he will be right behind them, and we see that Ares and the others are in Zoltan's port right now. Albert is wearing some attention-diverting bandages, so that people don't recognize him. Red then comes to the port to buy the things he need, and he meets Danan. The two of them have something to eat, and we see that Theodora and Albert are spying on them by hiding their presence. Danan asks Red why he left the party, and Red mentions that he had reached the limit of his strength, and he couldn't help them anymore. Danan tells him that this is not true, and he states that they found this out when he left the party. He mentions that Red might lack magic and martial arts skills, but his wit makes up for it all. He states that their party needs him, but Red mentions that he has already found out where he belongs. 
He states that he can't go back with Danan, and Danan accepts this. He mentions that he will stay in Zoltan for a while to see what Red is doing here, and Red states that it's fine with him, but Rudy is also here. He explains everything to Danan, and Danan mentions that he never knew that the hero was suffering so much. He states that he is not good at anything other than fighting, and he mentions that he will fight for any cause that the hero takes up, but if Rudy wants to quit being a hero, then he needs to think about what to do next. He states that for now they should go and help the hero, and Red asks him what happened to his right arm. Danan states that it's not a big deal, and they can talk on the way. The scene then cuts to Danan visiting Ares, but we find out that it's someone else, as his right hand is intact. He tells Ares that Gideon is also here, and he asks him where the hero is. Ares mentions that he doesn't have to explain anything to him, and the fake Danan mentions that Gideon plans to settle down here, and he is living with Rit. Ares can't believe that Gideon is living a peaceful life with a princess, while he is out there risking his life, and he asks Danan to take him to Gideon's shop. He mentions that he is going to tell him to disappear from Rudy's life forever, and the fake Danan takes him to the shop. Ares notices that no one is there, and he takes his anger out on everything in the shop, and he even destroys the bed. Afterwards we see Danan and Red heading to the ruins, and Red finds out that Shisan Don is still alive, and he was the one who cut off Danan's arm. He has taken the form of an adventurer, and Red wonders how he can be alive, as Rudy defeated him. Danan mentions that it's not a big deal, as they can defeat him again, and the two of them then notice a dragon flying above them. Red thinks that no one here should be strong enough to summon a dragon, and they notice that the dragon is heading towards the ruins, and they hurry up. Red then catches up with Rit and Tisei, and he tells them that Danan is coming as well. Rit apologizes to Red for not telling him that Danan was here, and she mentions that he didn't want to disturb the peaceful life he has here. Red asks her if she noticed something different about him, and Rit states that she didn't. Red then reveals to her that the person she saw was most likely she saw Don disguised as Danan, because when he saw Danan, he had lost his right arm. Rit wonders how she saw Don can still be alive, and Red states that it is a little hard to believe, but Danan is not someone who would forget a foe, he has faced. Rit then mentions that she would have cut Shisan Don down if she knew that he was the one she met, and she states that she decided to never take up a sword, but he is an exception. Red mentions that they should fight him together, and Rit agrees. Red then goes ahead, and he enters the elven ruins. After looking inside for a while Red finds Wood Elf script in the ruins, and he wonders what it's doing in an ancient elven ruin. He notices that the script says Hero Administration Authority, and he wonders what this is. He then goes ahead, and he manages to find Godwin. He asks him where the girl who dragged him here is, and Godwin mentions that she should be around here somewhere. Red asks him to shout out to her, and Godwin mentions that he would rather not, as she scares him to death, and Red forces him to shout. Hearing this Rudy comes there, and Red talks to her. He tells her that t Say told him everything, and he apologizes for not being able to help her. He states that he has also been looking for a way to suppress her blessing, but he wasn't successful. Rudy mentions that she can't understand why Red is doing this, as he has always tried to save the world, and he joined her for the same purpose. Red tells her that he did all that to stay by her side, and protect her, and Rudy wonders why, as she is the hero. Red mentions that it's because she is precious to him, and he knew that she would embark on a journey of her own one day, so he doesn't mind her wanting to quit being a hero. Rudy wonders if it's really okay for her to do what she wants, and Red states that it is, as her life is for her to live. Rudy then mentions that she is a selfish girl, and she doesn't deserve to be the hero, and she asks Red to not hate her for this. Red tells her that she will always be his beloved sister no matter what, and elsewhere we see that the fake Danan is trying to lead Ares into the elven ruins telling him that Red might be there. Afterwards we see Theodora and Albert heading to the ruins as well, and they meet Danan on the way. The scene then cuts to Red and Rudy meeting Rit and t Say inside the ruins, and Rudy thanks t Say for bringing Red and Rit here. Red mentions that they should talk to Godwin now, as demon hearts are required to make the drug, and he wonders what Godwin plans to do about that. Rudy mentions that the contract demon that came to her also said that the drug production requires demon hearts, but since the curse of demon hearts won't manifest in her, the devil's blessing can't take effect. Red wonders how she has been weakening the hero's blessing in this case, and Rudy states that a nameless blessing emerged within her. There are no skills and impulses, and it's just there. 
They talk to Godwin about this, and he mentions that he has never heard anything like this. Red wonders if Rudy is going to suffer murderous rages, and Godwin mentions that this is a known effect of the axe demon's blessing, but if the blessing doesn't manifest, then the rages also shouldn't. For now they can assume that nothing bad will happen due to this new blessing, and T-Say then notices that something is heading their way. Red finds out that they are play guys, and they will keep multiplying for the duration of the spell, and if they attack the caster will find out where they are. Rudy wipes them all out at once, and she runs off somewhere. Red goes after her, and he tells the others to follow behind while keeping Godwin safe. Rudy and Red then come across Ares, and Ares asks the hero to join him in fighting the demon lord. Rudy refuses, and she tells him that she is going to quit being a hero. Ares wonders if this is due to Gideon, and Red tries to tell him that he is wrong, but Ares attacks Red. He then asks Rudy to come with him, and Rudy stabs him. She mentions that Ares never understood her, and she states that she avoided his vitals, so he should be able to heal himself. She mentions that she would have killed him if he seriously injured her brother, and she then heals Red. Afterwards she leaves, and Ares can't understand why the hero won't fulfill her role. Bui then comes there, and he offers a healing potion to Ares, but Ares uses his healing magic to heal himself. He then uses his appraisal skill to find out that Bui is an Azura demon, and Bui offers to form an alliance with Ares. He mentions that a relic of the first hero lies hidden in these ruins, and the hero will return to his side if he gives this to her. Ares then goes with Bui to find the relic, and he thinks that besides the sage, the hero is the only blessing he ever respected, and he thought that God granted him this blessing, so he could fight alongside the hero. Afterwards Red tells the others that Ares is here, and he is trying to get Rudy back. Rit thinks that this explains the dragon, and those play guys, and T-Say finds out that he is in the lower levels, and he is working with someone. It's someone who is using magic to conceal themselves, and Rit states that it might be Shisan Don. Their group thinks that they will have to stop them, as Shisan Don must be trying to deceive Ares, and they head out. The scene then cuts to Theodora, Danan and Albert in the ruins, and Danan goes off on his own. He manages to locate Bui and Ares, and he asks Ares to stand back as Bui is his target. Bui thinks that he should be able to handle Danan as he is missing a hand, and the two of them fight. Danan sends Bui flying, and he mentions that he has to thank Bui for making him realize how useless his right hand has become, and thanks to this he has become stronger. He then kicks and punches Bui, and Bui can't do anything against him. He asks Ares to help him, and Ares thinks that he wouldn't stand a chance against Danan. He wonders what he should do, and he attacks Danan with a spell. This incapacitates him for a moment, and Bui manages to stab him. Danan still stands, and Bui then transforms into Shisan Don. He fights with Danan, and Danan manages to break all six of Shisan Don's swords, but Shisan Don stabs him using a blade from his feet, and this defeats Danan. Shisan Don then goes ahead with Ares, and they find the relic that he talked about. Ares notices that the relic is five holy demon slayer swords, and he thinks that there is only supposed to be one of those in existence. He wonders what's going on, and Shisan Don explains to him that these are not the holy demon slayer sword, as that sword is just a replica of the swords wielded by the first hero. These are the actual blades that the god bestowed to the hero, and they are called the Sacred Avengers. He explains that just like the replica sword, the current hero is also fake, and she has the soul of the first hero, as replicated by God. He mentions that returning her to the path of the hero requires two things, and first he must give her one of the Sacred Avengers, as they have the power to enhance the hero's blessing. Secondly he will have to take from her the reason why she wants to be Rudy instead of the hero, and Ares realizes that he will have to kill Gideon. Shisan Don then gives one of the swords to Ares, and the scene cuts to Rudy and the others, and Rudy gives back Thunderwaker to her bother. They then come across Shisan Don, and they all try to fight him, but Ares intervenes in the battle, and he attacks Red and Rit. Rudy saves them, and she mentions that she can still forgive Ares if he backs down, but he doesn't listen to her, and the two of them fight. Albert and Theodora then find the injured Danan, and Albert heals him using a healing potion. Meanwhile Ares draws the Sacred Avenger to fight Rudy, but Rudy breaks the swords using one of her skills. Seeing this Shisan Don thinks that her power already exceeds that of the previous hero, and Theodora then comes from below. She traps Rid in chains, and she fights the hero. Rudy wonders why she is doing this, 
and Theodora tells her that Rudy needs to be sacrificed for the sake of the world. She mentions that a new hero won't be born until she is alive, and Rudy mentions that she never chose to be a hero, and there are no end to those who want to be one. Theodora tells her that countless lives will be lost due to her decision, and Rudy states that she has no intention of sacrificing herself to save those whom she has never seen. Meanwhile a dragon holds down Rit, and Shisan Don asks Red if he is going to save his sister or save Rit. Theodora then tells Rudy that Gideon might be a great swordsman, but he can't save those dear to him without the help of the hero, and she mentions that humanity needs the hero. Rit then frees herself from the dragon, and she mentions that Theodora doesn't have the right to put her life in the hands of the hero. Theodora tells her that the hero was the one who saved her homeland, and she is the living proof that the world needs the hero. Rit states that this is not true, and she mentions that the hero, the guide, and the crusader were not the ones who saved her homeland, it was Rudy, Red and Theodora. Theodora mentions that people are nothing more than their blessings, and Rit states that this is not true. The hero is much more than a blessing, she is a person in which the blessing resides. She mentions that Lagervia was saved because the three of them inspired them to rise and fight, and Theodora states that she is nothing but a humble servant of God Demis, and she doesn't question his will. Rit mentions that God shouldn't put the burden of the world on unwilling shoulders, and Shisan Don mentions that he agrees and he states that only those who strive to be the hero should be worthy of that name. Red then kills the dragon, and Ares tries to take him and Rit out with a spell, and Rudy strikes down Theodora when she tries to get in her way of saving them. Red and Rit then fall down along with the elevator, and Shisan Don attacks Rudy. He breaks her sword, and we see that Ares is delighted thinking that he has killed Red. He mentions that this proves that he is better than him, and he then attacks Tisei with a wind spell. Tisei asks him why he is doing this, and Ares mentions that Rudy is the hero and she is supposed to sacrifice all in the name of her blessing. Tisei states that Ares can't be trusted with Rudy's fate, and she mentions that Rudy is powerful, but she is also an awkward girl, and she can love as well. She mentions that Rudy is just a normal girl, and she collapses due to her earlier wound. Mr. Crawley Wally then tries to defend her, and Godwin tries to save Tisei by creating some smoke, but Ares takes him out, and he also stomps on Mr. Crawley Wally. We then see that Red and Rit are still falling, and Danan uses one of his martial arts skills to save them, and send them back up. Ares can't believe that Red is still alive, and he tries to attack him, but Red dodges his attack, and Mr. Crawley Wally stops him from preparing another attack. Red then cuts both his hands off, and he strikes him down. This kills Ares, and elsewhere we see Rudy fighting Shisan Don while not knowing that her brother is still alive. She then asks Shisan Don if it's really a bad thing for her to live a normal life. Shisan Don mentions that it is, and he states that she must live her life as the hero. The god and humanity won't allow her to lead a normal life, and Rudy mentions that right now she is angry. She asks Shisan Don to give her brother back to her, and she punches, and breaks the rest of the sacred avengers except for the one that she knocked away earlier. She takes the remaining sword, and she kills Shisan Don with it. We then see Red healing Theodora with a potion, and Rudy goes to them. Red notices that she feels a little different, and she attacks him, but T Say saves him. She tells Rudy to not do this, as the person in front of her is someone dear to her. T Say then faints, and Red asks Godwin to look after her. He fights Rudy, and he tries to make her snap out of it, but he stands no chance, and she even breaks Thunder Waker. Red then fights her with his bronze sword, and he manages to stop her attack, and pull away the Sacred Avenger from her. Rudy then snaps out of it, and she starts crying thinking about what she has done. Danan and Albert then join the rest of them, and Rit states that her power isn't enough to heal Tisei. Rudy tries to use her healing hands, but it doesn't work, and she wonders why her power is not working when she needs it the most. She thinks that it has always manipulated her until now, and she can't believe that she slew the one true friend that she managed to find. Theodora then mentions that she will heal her, and she uses her power to heal Tisei. She mentions that she is not going to ask for Rudy's forgiveness, as she had no choice. She mentions that she has realized that being the hero is a really lonely and cruel fate, but Rudy was still the one chosen to save the world. Rudy states that she never wanted this, and Theodora mentions that it would be up to the world and God to judge if she were right or wrong. She asks Rudy to strike her down for what she has done, but Albert tells her to stop. He mentions that he always wanted to be the hero, 
but he never thought that the path would be so grim. He can see that Theodora was also anguished over what she should do, and what she did may be wrong, but she was a hero. She fought for the sake of the world using the means that she believed was right. He begs everyone to spare her life, and T. Say then wakes up. She is glad to see that Rudy is alive and well, and she apologizes for worrying her. Rudy is glad to see that she is fine, and she tells Theodora that she is going to live as Rudy now. She mentions that she never once thought of herself as the hero, and according to her Theodora is the one most suited for that role. She has fought for the sake of the world, and this is the mark of a true hero, and Red states that he feels that the real hero would be someone who wants to save the world of their own free will. Physical strength doesn't matter, it's the hero's strength of purpose which gives others the courage to fight. Theodora then asks Red if she can also become a guide like him, and Red tells her that she can if she wants to. The scene then cuts to Red noticing that Ares has done a number on their shop, and it starts to snow. Rudy and T say then come there, and Rudy enjoys the cold, as it's been a while since she felt it. They all then have breakfast, and Red explains that the new blessing that Rudy received took the name of Shin. It has a powerful skill, called Ruler, which can dominate and control other blessings. She is now using it to suppress the hero's blessing, and we find out that Rudy wants to start a farm that grows medicinal herbs. T Say is going to assist her, and the scene then cuts to them in Ares' funeral. They all say their goodbyes to him, and afterwards Rudy apologizes to Red for making him shoulder all this. Red thanks her for the concern, and he asks Danan how long he is planning to stay here. Danan mentions that his wounds should heal after two to three days of rest, and Red states that he will miss him. Danan then wonders why Shisan Don was able to wield the Sacred Avengers, and Rudy remembers that Theodora said that those swords were the relic of the first hero. She wonders why there were five of them, and Red thinks that this is just a theory, but he thinks that one of them is missing, and a past hero must have taken it. T Say thinks that then the number would add up to the same as the arms of an Azura demon, and they realize that the first hero was most likely an Azura demon, and since Azura demons don't have a blessing, God Demis must have changed the hero's meaning. He states that he is sure that the first hero would respect the choice that Rudy made, as she took back what it means to be the hero. Afterwards we see that Gons and Mido have fixed up Red's store, and Gons wonders how things are with Red's sister. Red states that it's fine, and Gons hopes that he can introduce her to him sometime. He then leaves, and Red serves some tea to Rit. She is upset that Ares even ruined the bed that they slept on, and she states that sometimes she gets scared that Red would be gone when she wakes up the next morning. It's because Red has the blessing of the guide, and she wonders what she would do if he just went to guide someone else. She thought that this shop, and that bed were somewhere they could always return to, but after seeing them trashed like that, she felt like Red didn't want her to come back. Red tells her that she is wrong, and he mentions that he needs her. He states that she is the only reason he comes back to this shop and that bed, and he hugs her. He mentions that he is the guide, and his role is to guide someone until they can go it alone, and then he moves on, but Rid is different. She knew that he wasn't perfect, but she still said that she wanted to be with him, and he mentions that he loves her far more than she can even imagine. He wants to be with her forever, and Red is happy to hear this. The scene then cuts to the two of them in bed, and they do the deed. Afterwards Rit tells Red that being with him like this is like a dream come true for her. Red then mentions that he previously said that this is the end of his journey, but it's also the start of a new and peaceful one. He states that the two of them are going to run the shop together, and on their days off they will go out together. They will have children someday, and life may get a bit hectic, but they will have fun. The kids will grow, and they will also grow old slowly, and then they will babysit their grandkids. Things will get hectic once more, but they will still be fun. Rit states that this sounds like a wonderful journey, and Red then asks Rit what's her favorite gemstone. Rit mentions that her favorite gemstone will be the one Red picks for her, and she states that she can't wait to see it. The next day Red meets Rudy in the house, and he asks her if Rit has already left. Rudy mentions that she has, and she asks them to follow behind. The two of them then head out, and they go to the market near the port. A hairpin in one of the shops catches Rudy's eyes, and Red buys it for her. They then have breakfast in a tavern, and Red shows her all around the port. The scene then cuts to the two of them sitting somewhere to rest, and Rudy mentions that she never thought that they would be able to spend time like this again. She states that she also never guessed that she would make friends with T Say and the others. 
She thanks Red for this, and she wonders if he is going to stay with her forever. Red tells her that he will be by her side for as long as she wants, and the two of them lie down to enjoy the cool breeze. The scene then cuts to Red in his shop, and Rudy tells him that she is done tending to the herb garden. She asks him if he has more work for her, and he tells her to rest as she must be tired. Rudy then sits beside Red, and she locks arms with him, and Rit does the same. They give each other the stink eye, and they then laugh. Migria then comes there, and she states that an urgent job just came up at the guild, and they need Rudy to deal with it. Rudy leaves for the job telling Red that she will be back, and Red tells her that he will cook whatever she wants to eat when she returns. Elsewhere we see Yarandrila talking with Godwin, and she asks him what Zoltan is like. Godwin mentions that it's a backwater place, but it's the perfect location for someone to settle down if they want a slow life, and Yarandrila thinks that she can't wait to see Gideon and Rid again. Thanks for watching season 1. Please like and share the video if you enjoyed it, and make sure to hit the subscribe button, and turn on the notification bell to keep getting new anime recap updates.